This video is brought to you by Sailrite. Hi, I'm Matt Grant with Sailrite at Sailrite's Indiana facility. And today what we're going to do is talk about replacing our entry awning. Uh, as you can see, we've got a domed entry awning uh, with scalloped lower edges. And uh, it's made out of a forest green sunbrella. This awning has been in place for years. Um, actually, it's been in place for at least seven years at this point. The material's in, still in good condition, but what typically happens with an awning over time is that eventually the, the binding trim starts to come loose and we've trimmed it away where it started to hang down. And it's just starting to look a little ratty. So we're gonna pull it off and we're gonna show you how to replace it. But before we do that, what we want to do is we want to get under the awning from the inside and we want to look at how it's attached and I strongly recommend that you pull out your camera at this point and take some pictures of some critical areas so you know how it goes back together when you're done. Awnings are very simple devices when you get right down to it. You'll notice that on this particular welded frame what we have is we have a bar that extends off of the lower portion of the frame which is for the lacing uh, of the grommet strip and that's what applies pressure down and then of course our skirt here covers all of that lacing from the outside uh, so that it looks nice. Um, this, this strip is really nothing more than a doubled layer of sunbrella with grommets throughout it spaced at a certain interval. I recommend that you take a photo of that at this point so you can see how that is set up. You should look at the ends as well so you can check the distance uh, that the, the strips start. Now, of course, when we pull this down, we'll have all of the fabric to look at as well, but it's always a good idea to see how the grommets interact with the framing in case you need to tweak the positioning of something. Uh, we want to, uh, of course, decide at this point before we pull it down whether we're happy with the design and the depth of our skirt and the cut of the skirt. And if we're not happy with that design, uh, then uh, we'll, we'll repattern that when we get to the loft floor. At the forward corners of the frame, we want to look for any additional reinforcement to the canvas. And you can see at the forward corners here, we have a double or even triple layer of material to keep the sharp edges of the awning structure from protruding through the canvas. We picked a day that's not fre freezing cold here in Indiana to remove the awning so we can build a new one for the building. Uh, but uh, as you can see, what Isaiah is doing here is he's just cutting the, uh, the lacing that holds the awning in place. Um, you'll also notice that much of the lacing is behind the frame. So at some point we are going to have to uh, release the brackets uh, from the building that are holding the framing tight to the building so that we can get all of the rest of those scrap uh, uh, lacing lines out from under the framing and we'll leave it loose when we go to install the new top so that we can lace under it once again. Um, now we're not going to pattern this structure. We're going to instead do something that we typically don't recommend at sale, right? Which is we're going to uh, use the existing covering as our pattern. But the reason that we can get away with that is that there are no sleeves uh, that hold this top in place. Instead, we just have our our lacing strips and we're anchoring by, by lacing it to this lowered rail all the way around. So even if we're off as much, of a ha as, much as a half an inch, um, we're going to be able to center it nicely. Now, we also have checked the curve that the original uh, fabricator used uh, at the seam between the top and the front and it looks to be pretty good. So we know that when we pattern that piece that if we follow that same curve we should be in good shape. Now we're just simply removing all the lacing lines in those grommet strips and then we'll remove the uh, old awning from the frame and then we'll take it inside and we'll use it as the pattern for the new frame. Deb's going to cut the front face of the awning from the top of the awning. She's cutting right down that seam. This is that semi-flat felled seam that was created to uh, sew the front panel to the top panel. She's cutting it right along the edge of the semi-flat felled seam. Just cut right at the edge of the front seam. Please excuse the plotter noise in the background. That's the vacuum table sucking down the fabric so that the plotter 
can cut panels for sale kits. We have reinforced corners here too. All right, that front face panel is now removed from the main top panel. Okay, we have our awning from the front of the building tore apart. The front piece is off here. And what we're going to do here is just get the measurements off of the cover. So we have 55 inches on the height of it. And we're using a fabric that has stripes, okay? Our stripes are going to go um, up and down on the front, vertical on the front, and then it'll, they will go horizontal going around the big body part of it. So our fabric's only 45 wide, plus there's a matching gold stripe here. So we have to have three different section pieces to get this front piece out of. So we'll have to overlay the piece far enough to make up this same stripe here, over here. And the same with the third piece. So um, we know that our height is going to be 55 cut. So we're going to go ahead and cut three panels, 55 inches, and then I'll lay them out here and show you how we're going to put them together. For our particular domed awning, we had 55 for the height, 118 for the width, and 97 inches for the length. We'll be using a Sombrella Marine Grade slash awning grade fabric. Here we're marking for the uh, height of the front panel. We're just using scissors here to cut the fabric. You can use a hot knife which helps to seal the edges. Okay now as you can see here we have three panels and to match up our stripe here for the width we have to measure how much the actual stripe is and when we overlay these if we were to put that right at the edge of that stripe Not a whole lot noticeable, but somewhat you can tell that this is a lot narrower stripe than the rest of them. So we want to make sure that we set that in just right to make up for the difference. In the same way here, we're going to sew on this very edge and then we'll flip it over and sew on the back edge of it. Make this one complete piece, then we'll lay this on top of those three and cut around it using this as our pattern. Deb's using a double-sided tape or seam stick, part number 129, to pre-base these panels together prior to sewing. That keeps things from moving on her when she takes it to the sewing machine to finally sew it down. Just peel off the transfer paper and it reveals the glue and then base the panels together. Now we'll take this to the sewing machine and sew a straight stitch along the one edge. We're using Tanara thread. The Tanara thread is a lifetime guaranteed thread. It will not rot in the sun and elements and it is chemical resistant. Make sure you do reversing at the beginning and the end. Then Deb will flip this panel over so that she can see the other edge and she'll sew a straight stitch along there as well. Okay, we've already stitched down this loose edge, so now we're going to stitch down this loose Polyester edge. thread could also be used for this awning, but Tanara will last the lifetime of the fabric, even in the hot sun in the tropics. We're going to show only sewing these two together. We will not show sewing the third. Okay, now here we have our three panels sewn together. And it's going to be longer than what we need, but two panels wouldn't be long enough for what we need. The front of our cover was 118 inches. We'll add an inch to that for Nita Pucker Phenomenon, which we'll discuss later. For the height measurement, ours was 55, we will not add anything to that. And measure for your 119 inches. Okay, and we want to mark that right there for 119. We have this little bit of extra here because our cover is going to be curved up and we'll have extra up there. We have pockets and uh, tab edges to sew around the whole outside that we have to put grommets in. And that's what a lot of this is going to be used for because while we're adding those on, we're also going to be matching the stripes with that little tab with the grommets in. Now Deb's going to lay the old awning on top of the new fabric for the face. She's also going to ensure that she has a half inch on each end extra because... We want to take care of needle pucker phenomenon. She's going to explain that now. I'm bringing this out a little extra because with this, 
pocket with the rit the grommets in. When that gets sewn in, it has a tendency to pull your fabric and shorten it up lengthwise. So you want to add about an inch for every 10 feet. So we're going to add a half inch on one end and the other, just like we have here. And then once we get up pat beyond this to the patch, we can just veer this off. Now Deb's going to ensure that that uh, old awning is laying nice and flat so that she can pattern around it. She's going to use a soapstone pencil again. Now just trace around the cover and you'll notice that when she gets down there near where the grommet is, she flares it out. Just in case it shrinks a little bit because of needle pucker phenomenon. this we can just go right ahead now we we'll just continue to go on around the awning I'll put the scallop around the edge I'm just following the other one you can put any kind of design or whatever you want to onto this okay now we have inch and a half here which it's folded over so that it's doubled to take on the grommets. So we'll need to cut those at three inches wide to be folded in half. And the, ground, the edge of this here, you want to measure that from the bottom edge, which is nine and a half on this one. Okay, so then we'll go over here and we'll measure up nine and a half. And this is the back side of the fabric measure up nine and a half and we'll do that all the way across and we'll strike a line for this to fall on once we get it sewn then you'll put the edge of your fabric up against the line it's important to note that the grommet strip needs to be high enough from the tie bar notice here when we're done it's actually too close we should have moved it up at least an inch it was sufficient but had we moved it up an inch we would have had a little bit more tensioning power we didn't have enough tensioning power because you can see how close it is to the tie bar even before we tension down the line. So in retrospect, instead of being 9.5 inches, we should have made it 10.5 inches. Better safe than sorry. You just want that grommet strip to be at least an inch away from the tie bar. Now back to our project. To keep it from wearing through where all the framework lays. And they have those at ten and three quarters by four inches so we're also going to want to make patches there and they're also a double thickness there so it's actually probably I would say it's probably an eight inch that's been folded in half so that there's three thicknesses all together here on this corner so we want to build a patch and we're also going to build these pockets and what we'll have to do here is measure down our three inches and we'll make three inch strips. We'll sew those together just like the panels and then we'll be able to match them up exactly with the stripes up underneath so that when you look up underneath your awning it all blends together. Deb striking the line for that grommet strip here and she's striking it at nine and a half inches though it probably would have been better had we moved the strip up to ten and a half inches as we explained earlier. Then we're going to use a professional hot knife. This is the Engel hot knife to cut out the fabric. Using a hot knife on the edge of Sombrella fabric helps to prevent unraveling of the fabric. It's especially important on the scallops where you'll be installing binding later on so that when you sew the binding on if the stitch gets close to the edge it doesn't rip out. So we're cutting out the entire awning now. If you don't have a hot knife, you could use a wood burning tool or a soldering gun as well. Now Deb's taking some of that scrap fabric and she's marking the three inch uh, strips that will be used for the grommets to lace the awning onto the tie bar. 
She's going to make several strips of these and sew them together, and we'll use a hot knife. You'll notice that when we're cutting on the hot knife, we're cutting on a piece of old glass. That helps to prevent damage to our tabletop, and we're also using the R-blade. Now she'll find some scrap fabric for that corner reinforcement area. She's going to make two layers here. You could easily get away with one now, layer. And take this folded fabric, line up our stripes. When making any reinforcing patches, if your awning has stripes, you need to line them up, as Deb is doing here. Okay, and this is the edge. I'm going to cut. If you use a hot knife to cut out this patch reinforcing, it will not unravel around the edges. Okay, now we did the double width of that, so we fold it in half. And we place it in here. That matches up perfectly. Again, as stated, you don't need to have a double layer. One layer is more than likely sufficient because it didn't even braid through on the old one. Line up our stripes. And it disappears right into the fabric. Now we're going to go over and we're going to run stitches around all the way around the outside to hold that patch on the corner. We're going to make another one, same on the other end. And then when we come back, we'll show you how we're going to make the strips. We'll just show this briefly here. Deb's going to take that reinforcing patch and she's going to sew around the entire perimeter of it. Every time that Deb starts a stitch and ends a stitch, she does some reversing to lock the stitch in place. That's always a good idea. Notice that when Deb turns the corner, she buries the needle in the fabric, lifts the foot, turns the fabric, lowers the foot, and continues to sew. Let's fast forward. Here again at this corner, buries the needle, lifts the foot, lowers the foot, continues to sew. Here's that patch sewing all around the edges. Okay, now we're going to get our three inch strips ready here. And you, these have to go on first because you need your grommet pocket to go over top of that. Okay? And the grommet pocket needs to be set in an inch and a half. She got that inch and a half measurement from the old awning. We need to continue the line out. An inch and a half is right there. And our pockets folded in half will be an inch and a half. Since we cut our strips out of scrap fabric, we have to join the strips together. So now you have to lay all your strips across, and match them up. And some of them are already sewn together. From the strips that we cut off of the other pieces. In lieu of joining sections together to make one long piece, okay, it would have been easier just to make our main panel a little bit wider so that we could just cut a strip off of it. But we're trying to save fabric, so we're going to make it out of scrap. Once we've matched up the strips, we'll take them to the sewing machine and just join them together. All right, we're not going to show all this. Basically, just two stitches joins each one of those grommet strips together down each seam. Okay, we have our three-inch strip now, all seamed together. The three-inch strip folded in half creates a one and a half-inch strip, perfect for our grommet placement. Here at the end, Deb folds it and cuts it off, being sure to match up the stripes. A little bit under. I don't want that whole piece. Mm -hmm. Deb's going to create a single hem here at the end, though that's not okay, necessary. We'll Line up your stripes. Start at the end where we mark it. If you would like, you could pre sew this three inch strip equaling one and a half inch down that raw edge, sew those raw edges together then take it to the uh, awning and sew it on. It creates a little bit more labor, but uh, it may be easier for you. It just depends. Here, Deb just sews it directly down to the awning, 
with it folded. And this is where we add it on to the edge of this because just showing across here 10 foot, we're going to kind of shrink it up at least an inch here. So we want to add on to from this width all the way across here to the other end, at least an inch. Deb's referring to the needle pucker phenomenon that we discussed okay, earlier. Matching up our stripes as we go. Match up the stripes as you go. The needle pucker phenomenon basically um, means that the needle enters the fabric and it has a tendency when it's tensioning the thread to shrink up the fabric approximately or close to one inch for every ten foot. It's not always the case, but usually it is. It's not fun to do a long project and find out you're a half inch short or an inch short. It's not as crucial on an awning like this, but on other projects we sometimes always calculate for possible needle pucker phenomenon and make the project a little bit longer. Please excuse the plotter noise in the background. Jeff is again plotting sails and that vacuum table is on. Now here we're preparing for the uh, insertion of the grommets in that uh, one and a half inch strip that we just sewed down. For our awning we're going to place the grommets at six inches apart. Now we're using a hole cutter and the rubber cutting pad to prevent damage to the tool and we're using a heavy mallet to punch the holes. Typically for lacing we use number one spur grommets. These are the nickel plated brass grommets and we're using a number one spur grommet die set with that heavy mallet. And just go down the entire run placing grommets every six inches. We are now going to measure for the top of the awning. In our awning, our top measured 15 feet, including the curtain or scallop on both sides. We arrived at that calculation by measuring the old awning. However, you can measure over the top of your frame. Now we're going to mark that new strip of fabric at 15 feet. Okay, this feet. is our second panel, and we measured the old panel, which was 15 feet. And our fabric's only 45, so we have to have three runs of 15 feet to get the depth that we need. The depth or length that we need is 97 inches for our awning. The back of the awning has a one and a half inch hem, so we'll actually make it 98 and a half inches. We're going to use two full panels, and then we'll have to use just a section of another to do our stripe matching on this particular fabric. Let's run a seam stick down through the center, and then we'll bring our panel up, overlay it, just like we did on the front panel. Overlay it to the line, then we have our width so that it corresponds with the rest of them. Deb will use double-sided basting tape to pre-base these panels together prior to sewing. Then she'll take it over to the sewing machine, she'll sew down uh, one side of it, flip the panel, sew down the other side just as she did previously with that front panel. We'll not show all that. You'll do that to all three yeah. panels. For this awning, yours may have more or less. Okay, now on our finished edge it's going up against the building. We have our small panel sewn on here now. And all we need to do is turn up, we have hot knife the edge so that it's finished. And uh, you can put a double hem if you want. We didn't see any reason for that. So the inch and a half hem, if you just measure in three inches, and you can strike a line in. And once you've had the edges, just fold them up to your line. You can use a double-sided tape if you want. I'm just going to make an inch and a half in hem all the way across the edge. Obviously that hem would go to the inside of the awning, not the outside. Sombrella marine grade and awning grade do not have a right side or wrong and side. Once we get that inch and a half hem finished, then we're going to put a pocket up here like we did on the front panel, only we have to match the stripe going the long way this time, where before we, on the sides we have to match it stripe to stripe to stripe. So once we get this all hemmed, we'll show you how to make the pocket for the grommets for the back edge that goes up against the building. Deb calls it a pocket, I call it a grommet strip. Same thing. 
All right, before installing the grommet strips that will be used for lacing, it's a good idea to measure the canopy and compare it against the frame structure that you have on your building. That way you can make changes if necessary before you go too far. Okay, now we're going to be putting on the rear tag with the grommets in it. Just going to build up a little flap, uh, two thicknesses on the flap so that it will cover all the way from one end to the other. And we're going to match the striping to make sure that it falls where we want it to. We want them to go four and a quarter up. That measurement was taken from our right old awning. At this green line. So what we have to do now is measure down from that green line. We want an inch and a half pocket for the grommets. So we need to have three inches because we're going to fold it in half and have double thickness for our grommets to go through. This is exactly the same procedure that we did to make the other grommet strips. It's just that the line's running the other direction. Come down three inches. So we're going to cut this strip out of this fabric here. And we're going to lay our hinge with our grommets right along here. This is a scrap fabric from our 15-foot run from the third panel that was not used. And we'll hot knife this and come back and stitch it on. We're not going to show hot knifing it, but we already did that. Okay, now we're going to sew down this reinforcement patch that will fall on the back corner. And then our hinge will go right over top. When Deb says hinge, she's referring to the grommet strip that will be used for lacing. Deb places another reinforcing patch here at this back corner, but I don't see that that's necessary. I would skip that if I were you. I don't see any hardware that will cause abrasion. Like so, and then we'll put our grommets in here over top of our patch. Because of course your grommets can't go through the corner patch. What's necessary now is to make the grommeting strips that will be used for the lacing around the uh, back side and the sides of the awning. So we'll make one for the back and we'll position it and we'll make one for the two sides and position those as well. We'll not show the entire process of putting these strips on all three sides. We'll just show you little clips. This is obviously one of the grommet strips for the sides because the stripes are running up and down. She's just pre-folding it in half so she can sew it in place. You can see on the main panel that she already marked the fabric with the soapstone pencil so she determined exactly where this strip should be sewn down to the main panel. It is necessary to install the corner patch to the uh, forward portion of this awning and we've already done that here. After making all of your grommeting strips, you'll need to place scallops on the sides of the main panel. Use your old awning as a template and trace around it. We've done that already. Okay, now we have got the back side with the hem on it, and I have the grommets already placed, which I wanted to show you that you can, as long as it's wide enough, put pre put your grommets in and then sew them on. You just have to make sure that you have enough room beside your grommets to sew them on. I've already put the two end pockets along the bottom so that we have our grommets in and we've matched up all of our striping just as we did on the front panel that we already showed you while we were installing that. We showed that you put the grommets on afterwards on that one. Now this one I'm showing you that you can go ahead and put your grommets in and then sew it down. And then along with that, our stripe is all green that you notice here because it's going to fall on the green stripe on the canopy. That way the color will be hidden pretty much when it's up and you look up under it, everything's going to flow together. We'll th sew this on. And uh, then I'll be sewing on the front, doing a top stitch across the top of it, and then we'll be putting our binding around the edge. Okay, now along with these hinges with the grommets in, we've also put our reinforcement patches into the corner on all four corners, just like we did on the front panel. I don't think the reinforcing patch for the back portion of this the awning was necessary. This is where we made our mark and decided earlier that that would be where our pocket would fall at four and a quarter, just as the original was. So I'm going to go ahead and start this and sew it all the way across through 
the green stripe here on the fabric. Notice because she put the grommets in we'll prior to sewing it down, she pre-sewed that uh, one and a half inch strip together. It was three inches, and now it's one and a half because it's been folded in half. And again, this is the side with the hem toward the back. And as you can see, it's just missing the grommets. So depending on the size of grommets that you have and the size of the hinge pocket that you're using with your grommets on, Okay, now we've gotten to the point where all of it's done except for adding the front panel on. So what you want to do is the length of it where it's going to be sewn to the front, you want to find your center and mark it. And also you want to mark the center on your cover, which is right in between the navy and the green. I don't know if you can see the mark or not. And ours is such a large cover. If you haven't done a whole lot of canvas sewing, you may want to go ahead and line up your centers and start at your center and sew the one curve all the way down and then flip it and come back to the center and then go down. Um, I've found that working with the curve on the top and using your straight at the bottom, it's a lot easier to work with than to try to make a curve with a straight piece with the curve on the underside. But if you know, it's all—it's all in everybody's own way of doing things, how they want to do it. Normally, what I would do is just take it, mark it in the center, and then I would walk it down. Which we've already done all of our measurements and gotten the length and everything, so that we can come out even at the bottom here. So all we're going to do is bring this down, and this is the back edge. It's got to have the half inch sewn to it and the front edge here. We've just got it kind of folded together to take up a little less space. With all these stripes, it's kind of hard to tell. But we've got our corner patches sewn here and our corner patches sewn here. And now this is our front panel. That's the back. This is our front that will start here. It'll continue around the side with the curve. We're going to line these up and just start sewing. And that way I've left the patch off about a half an inch so that it's not quite as much thickness on that corner. And I'm going to be sewing down the half inch. That way when I go ahead and flip it, you don't have quite as much bulk there on the corner. But you can bring your patch right out. It's just all in self-preference. So now we'll put the top on, the front on the top. Okay, I'm going to use this magnet guide. It's a real strong magnet that holds on and it'll help guide the half inch all the way through. So what you want to do is just kind of bring your needle down, put your ruler in front of it at your half inch mark, or however wide the width of seam that you want to make. And then you just put this magnet right up against onto the door. And as you can see, that's not going to go anywhere. <laughs> A lot of them that you buy you put a little bit of pressure on them and they slide right off and don't do a whole lot of good. But these have really nice magnets on them. You guys want to take some back stitches when you first start out. She's sewing a straight stitch, matching up the two raw edges and being careful to place the stitch a half inch away from the raw edge. Using that magnetic guide, helps to ensure that she's doing this. The front panel has some shape built into it so she's just pulling that front panel over so it matches the bottom top panel which has no shape. So just be patient and take your time and She just said that she's coming up to the center point and everything's matching up perfectly. 
because she's not pulling harder on one panel than the other. She's just trying to be careful to just line up the edges and not pull on the bottom panel and not pull on the top panel. Just let the Sarite big and tall sewing machine feed it in accurately. That's the advantage of using a walking foot sewing machine like the Ultra Feed sewing machine would do a great job of this as well. It just has a smaller throat size. Okay, we're going to skip ahead here, and now she's going to show you how to do the semi flat filled seam. Okay, now we're at the corner here. This is our side panel, this is our front panel. So what we're going to do is we're going to fold our front panel seam back onto the top panel. And this is our rounded front. And we're going to top stitch on the flat edge of this top panel because the front panel is going to be folded under it. We're going to do what they call a semi-flat felt seam. Where this is your seam, you're going to push it all to one side and we're going to top stitch on this edge with it all pulled up in there. As Deb creates the semi flat failed seam, you notice that she's being careful to pull the panels apart as she sews so that the uh, stitch is approximately a uh, quarter inch away from that uh, first stitch that we sewed to join the panels together. And she's making sure that she's sewing through the flap that's laying on the bottom side. Okay, you notice that stitch is approximately a quarter inch from the uh, first stitch. on this, pull on the inside one. All right, we're going to skip ahead okay, here. Okay, we're going to do our edges now with a soft acrylic binding, and we're going to apply it on here with our zigzag machine. And it is quite soft, and it wants to pull out, so you want to kind of, as you're sewing, just kind of hold it a little bit taut, and it'll pull right back. Now I've stitched straight across the end of this to kind of draw it in, otherwise it wants to spray out and that'll hold it together for you and you can just kind of tuck that down to start your end. That way your end's all finished off and you don't have all of that. And you want to kind of pull it, put where you can see you've got half of it underneath. And then just kind of pinch it with your finger and you can kind of feel the edge inside of there. And it's very time consuming, but it's well worth the trouble to take your time and have it look real nice. Just go a few inches at a time, whatever you're comfortable with. Your inner curve is always harder, so you try to make that a little bit straighter. Once you get used to putting the binding on, though, you can do about any shape that you want to. Around the edges. Make sure that that's up underneath. We chose to do it on the altar feed mainly because we wanted to do a zigzag which helps to catch that uh, fabric, especially when you're doing scallops when you're doing the binding. Bring this down, pull it tight. Using the regular acrylic uh, binding doesn't go around the curve as well as the soft acrylic binding does. The beauty of the soft acrylic binding is that it lasts longer in the sun than any polyester or nylon or any other fabric binding does and yet curves nicely. Unfortunately, it doesn't have enough body to be fed through a binder attachment so you have to do it by hand. takes a little bit of time, but uh, we're not going to show all of it. Here we are with the awning complete, 
and we're getting ready to install it over the top of the frame. Don't fall. <laughs> Once we get the awning in place over the frame, we're going to use a 1 8 inch leech line Dacron to lace it through the grommets and to the tie bar. When you, when you get it tightened around the bar and get ready to do it, just look behind you and make sure that you're vertical with the bar. Okay, now we're about happy with the placement of the awning. It needs to be shifted around a little bit more, but we're going to start lacing the back end of the awning using the Dacron leech line. You could also use uh, plastic uh, uh, zip ties if you want. Plastic zip ties are kind of nice, but uh, usually awnings use a uh, Dacron line like this. Now, when lacing, we typically like to uh, lace the back portion with a separate line and the sides with a separate line and also the front with a separate line. That way we don't have to uh, worry about feeding the, all that line through the entire parameter perimeter of the awning. You can do it in sections and tie it off. When lacing you may run into hardware. If the awning's not in the right spot then lacing around that hardware could change so try to think about where the final resting place will be before lacing the entire awning. You can see it's a little bit too far to the right here. Do I need to go up higher? Do I need to go over this bar or under it? Um, that's a good question. Probably over it. Yeah, I'd say over good it. Good call, because the awning is way too far to the right. Here's what the lacing looks like along the back side of the awning. We have not laced any of the other sides yet. And Deb's drawing it tight here. Deb's pulling the lacing to make it nice and tight so that we can lace the uh, sides and also the front that next. Put that through the corner. Yeah. There, yeah. there, and then let me. behind take this rope and you're going to work now under it and then behind because you're going your opposite way of what you were keep uh, lacing all around the perimeter lace the front and the sides drawing the awning tight all around its frame you can see in the video as we're lacing this that that uh, grommeting strip is too close to the front tie bar and also the side tie bars. So along the front and the sides we should have moved the grommeting strip up an inch as we discussed earlier in the video. That way we would have had a little bit more pulling power to draw the canvas over the frame tightly. The dome shaped awning is almost complete. Finish up the lacing, tie it off, and here it is done. It looks good. We hope this video has been helpful for you to make your own dome-shaped awning out of sunbrella marine grade or awning grade fabric. I'm Eric Grant with Sarah. Thanks for watching this video. Bye-bye.